<laughs> What's up, students? Welcome back to the Ugly Chairs podcast. We're so glad that you're joining us today as we're continuing our conversation on spiritual disciplines and Easter as well. So joined again today by Drew and Caroline. How's it going, y'all? Good. Good? Good day. Good? Dandy. 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 Easter's Dandy coming day. up. Come on. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Ready Not for really, it? Kind of. <laughs> what do you, what do, you do to get ready for Cause, Easter? Because yeah. I have, I got to do like Easter egg, Easter baskets. Yeah. Like I got to keep that tradition going. Like growing up, that was the tradition. Yeah. So do you, do you decorate? Do you do like, oh, uh, no. like Easter decorations? No. I would, what are I just, are there Easter decorations? There are. I'm there not, are I, out there. They're I'm out not there. good at that. It's yeah. too much effort for me. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Well, I was actually going to say, do you guys have like main Easter traditions that y'all do with your family every single year? Or like even ones that you loved doing growing up as a kid? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, it's like the Easter egg hunt. Uh, like totally. My uncle would always uh, hide a golden egg. Okay. And there was like 20 bucks in it. Oh, so, dude, that's oh. a that's yeah. a solid Easter so that egg hunt was right like, there. Yeah. yeah, so like that was a big deal. So does, the he, does he hunt, still do it? Can I go over and now it's five dollars? Ah, okay, since no. I'm you know no hold up, on growing yeah, up yeah. now inflation it should be forty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. anyway, how's it going down now? Come, Come on, on, Uncle. <laughs> I know I haven't listened to this. Yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, I want to keep that going. Yeah. Or maybe not. I don't know if I'm gonna do the golden egg. <laughs> like, maybe not that, but I like that growing up. That's fun. Yeah, fun. Yeah, I think I remember my grandma. Uh, doing Easter eggs and she liked chocolate and so she would open up the eggs before she hit them and then eat the chocolate and then put like a nickel in there. So when we'd like find, uh. when we'd find an egg that had like change in it, we're like, oh grandma, ate the, cho- ate the chocolate. And there yeah. was one year there was <laughs> so, there was so much change. Like that woman ate a bag of chocolate oh, that no. year. It was really just her <laughs> excuse just to keep that eating. so much. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, grandma, oh, just put you on blast. Yeah, but, that's dude. so you sweet. Yeah. She probably, it's probably like the one time a year she like yeah. let herself have chocolate. Like, her. yeah. yeah. It's just like, yeah. like wrappers all over yeah, the floor. Yeah, like, it's just, my day dude. for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Easter's their day, but this one, the, for, the lead of so, it, this is mine. Yeah. And I, I remember oh, being so a kid sweet. and being like, a nickel? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, not even a quarter. No, um, I know. And right. I know, it wasn't even that long ago that yeah. inflation was like, right. mm, go to the penny store and get <laughs> some on. candy. Like, yeah, no, right. I'm not that old. Oh I just was like, oh, cool, grandma ate this much chocolate and yeah. I have 95 cents. Uh, not even a dollar. Not even a dollar. What am I going to do with 95 cents? Yeah. Anyways, wow. So it has nothing to do with Jesus. <laughs> no, but that's it. What we did. That's I right. remember, so you're not going to keep that going, probably. No. <laughs> I, I remember like uh, Easter outfits. Yeah. Oh, like a thing yeah. yeah. Where it was like, oh, we have to go get your Easter outfit. Right. Yeah. And it was always like pastel yeah. and like not. Yeah. It was the 90s. So that was like a period of time way before uh, you guys were even a, <laughs> a thought. But uh, yeah. others of us lived during that time, and the the fashion was bad, and the Easter outfits were even worse. Like, yeah. very, I didn't wear these, my sister did, very fluffy dresses. Oh, okay. Very fluffy. A lot of fill, I think, is, is the word. I don't know. <laughs> and then ours, Don't look at me, man. <laughs> it, ours, like, a oh, lot no. of vests. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. remember, yeah. like, a mint uh-huh. green vest. Uh-huh. And you just remember hating it. Yeah, second. and looking at pictures, being like, "Mom, <laughs> yeah, seriously." Anyways, yeah, Easter well, outfits. Yeah. I was gonna say it's it's nice to know that you guys did the Easter egg hunts with like the plastic guys with the actual like things, and we used to actually go over to my grandparents and dye our own Easter eggs, and then that was the ones that we used in the actual like Easter egg like hunting. So like yeah. there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, there was a couple of times where we used like the the plastic eggs yeah. too, I guess. But like the majority of the time growing up, like I remember, it's like, oh, it was more like you're finding the eggs you just worked on versus like there's actually like the gifts inside there then too, which is a little disappointing. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't think yeah. I like that. It, that's like yeah. picking your own apples. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to pay more money to do someone like your job yeah, right? so <laughs> to true. still get the same thing. Yeah. So your parents were like, we're yeah. not going to stuff eggs. Right. They can do all the work and paint them. Yeah. We'll totally. hide them. Yeah. How hard is that? You just kind of toss them into the yard yeah. and then you have to go find it. No, I ain't about that life. I ain't doing that. <laughs> it works. It works, I guess. But um, so, y'all, uh, just jumping back in, uh, actually, just kind of even picking up a little bit from the last episode we did too. We did too when we were talking about spiritual disciplines. Um, I wanted to just take a second and kind of tag on a little bit, maybe a little bit like a little bit like a bonus uh, conversation. We can just kind of tag on to um, all the awesome stuff we talked about there too. But um, uh, through that, we talked about one of the spiritual disciplines that uh, is very common um, and even just a great one if we're. <clears throat> looking to start 
sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, we're looking to start uh, getting involved with spiritual disciplines is, uh, is prayer. And I'm just curious to know, like, what has prayer looked like for y'all across your life? Um, maybe even just recently, like, what's been kind of your rhythm with it? What are some things that you really enjoy about it? Um, yeah, what's prayer looked like for you guys? What do you got, girl? Um, so one of the things I enjoy about it is I think Drew touched on this last episode is like, it's wild to think that we can just talk to the king of the universe. Like, that's crazy. Like, if you sit and think about that, like we have at any moment, any day, any time, like we just can talk to him. Yeah. And that's so cool. And like all that's available to us through that. And one of my favorite things about prayer, and this does not happen all the time, it's like rare, honestly, that this happens, but when I, one of the things that helps me with prayer is like journaling out a prayer. And when I do that, it just helps me like stay more focused because what will happen to me very often when I pray is my mind just wanders and just like goes to something else. So if I like journal and like write out a prayer, oftentimes if I'm like struggling, like mad at someone particular in particularly, um, I'll like journal out, write this prayer out and like tell God why I'm mad at this person. And he will just like totally change my perspective on like why I'm mad at them and like just change my heart towards them. And it is, it is nothing that I'm doing. It's like I'm writing and all of a sudden I write, I look back at the sentence I just wrote and I'm like, whoa, like that was God, like changing my heart as I was praying. And like I said, it doesn't happen all the time. Um, it's happened like a handful of times in my life, but that just speaks to like God changes our hearts when we pray. Yeah. And that's incredible. And prayer is so powerful. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Drew, yeah. how about for you, bro? Yeah, I think my relationship with prayer has changed. And I think it's still changing and still growing. I think it, it challenges some of my thoughts about who God is and how he works, if that makes sense. And I remember being in college and talking about prayer and the professor was like, prayer is actually this beautiful gift that God gives us that actually changes our heart to become more like his. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times we're like, and it does, and we do see it in scripture of like, it says he's our father and he wants his kids to ask him for things and he'll yeah. grant it. So, so, so there is right. some movement there, but when I think about prayer, it's like, man, so much of it is my heart moving to be more like God's heart. Not yeah. me being like, oh God, can you, can, can you change this? It's no, 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 can you change me yeah. right. as I walk through this. And yeah. I think that was a huge change in, in my thinking. And um, I've been reading a book called Dangerous Prayers oh, and cool. even yeah. like getting to the point of even trusting God with some like dangerous prayers, like yeah. search me, mm -hmm. like find if there's something in me that needs to be confessed, uh, yeah. break me, lead me. These like really dangerous prayers that you're just saying like, God, I fully mm -hmm. trust you and I, don't, I think even some of them are not even like ready to pray yet, if sure. that makes sense. I think there's still more work that has to happen in my heart to fully say, all right, Lord, now break me. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. crazy how like as a spiritual discipline, it is so personable to like the person. But again, like we all have access to it, kind of like what you're saying then too. Um, I know for me, something that was an interesting tension I felt growing up, and I'm curious if y'all have felt this too or have been thinking through um, how to navigate the same thing too. It's like... Um, almost like there's a per, there's a there's a right way to pray in a, in a lot of ways like there's like a perfect or like even um if you're praying in a group setting for or praying for other people right there's like there's a there's a right way to do it there's a perfect way to do it um and feeling some maybe some of the tension or burden around like hey i'm not and i've, I've, I've even heard students say it too um in, in collide and hsm too of like I, I'm not a good prayer. You don't want me to pray for the group because I don't pr I don't pray well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh no no, that's not like you're missing the point of it yeah. then too, right? Like, have y'all ever experienced that before? How have you worked through that tension? Or maybe you've even mm -hmm. seen students feel that way before too? You know, so speaking to that a little bit, dude. I love yeah. the prayers of a middle schooler because they're just so honest they and yeah. unfiltered, and there's something so beautiful that I'm like, man, I wish I even just had courage yeah. to like pray for those things. Hundred percent. They yeah. they think of things. So I'm like even super encouraged. So I, I try to find that tension of like not being like, no, dude, you got this. Like, I think you can do this. And then also, you know, recognizing the how uncomfortable it be. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I love, I, I like my high schoolers pray too, but there's something about middle schoolers. <laughs> really middle schoolers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, all you high schoolers who are, are watching this, but uh, yeah. no, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel that the most when it comes to like praying out loud, because obviously like other people are going to be listening and like. For a long time, when I would think about praying out loud, I would just think about people I've heard pray out loud. So sure. like my youth pastor, my pastor 
at, on stage on Sundays, like, you know, people that are like, you know, really good speakers or whatever. And I felt like I had to sound like them when I prayed. Mm. And so I think if that's something you struggle with, like just the fear of praying out loud, I would say like, just be you, mm. just be yourself. Like if you try to sound like somebody else, it's, you're not being you. And the whole point is just for you to talk to God. It's between you and him. Yeah. And so yes, other people might be listening, but just try to think that it's you and God in a room and you're just talking to him and just be yourself and that's all you need to bring to it. Yeah. Have you ever prayed for safe traveling mercies before? That's a that's <laughs> I actually a have. Yeah, mercies. Yeah, yeah. 100%. That's a phrase. Yeah. yeah. That, is, that, 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 is that, that we yeah. use. I remember like sitting in the car before we'd like drive to my grandparents' house that was like 2 hours away. Uh -huh. yeah. My parents would be like we're we're going to pray and we're going to pray for some safe traveling mercies. Yeah. yeah. Be dear Lord. Please give yeah. us safe. Uh, like we became old English all yeah. of a sudden. <laughs> but it's like because yeah. they heard that, and so just like, oh, that's how, <laughs> right, what you yeah. should say. That's just like, like right, yeah. Even Keep though it's safe. not how they would say it, maybe. Yeah. It's just I like, love that oh. you guys have heard that phrase too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Yeah. 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 I, I think Jesus knew that it would be a hard practice for us, and so he actually teaches us how to pray. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's the Lord's prayer, and it's oh, yeah. probably the most quoted prayer ever to exist. But I think there is even something to that rhythm that he showed us in the prayer that we can use even as a rhythm of sure. then praying mm -hmm. naturally. But if you're like, I don't even know where to start. Jesus is like, let me teach you how to pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's just a very basic guideline yeah. to get you kicked off. So yeah. I even love that he just even like, just helped us out a little bit with that. Yeah, yeah. or in Philippians 4, pray about everything. Mm -hmm. So like, what do I pray about? Everything, Sure. anything. Like the stuff middle schoolers will pray about. They're so good that's at That's part of it. Yeah, like they'll just pray about anything and yeah. everything and like, yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. Start there. Hundred percent. Yeah, and like again, the Bible's filled with great references and like resources for us to even look back on and see like um, how we can continue to how we can, can continue to develop our, our prayer life then as well too. Um, but Drew, you even mentioned the book you're currently reading, Dangerous mm -hmm. Prayers. It's called Dangerous, Dangerous Prayers. Prayers. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just curious, like, do y'all have any other resources that have been just helpful for you thinking through that idea of prayer, or um, it, it could be books or even just. Uh, yeah, just any other resources then that have just been helpful for you as you guys been in that journey of figuring out what prayer looks like for you in your life? Yeah. Um, Fervent by Priscilla Shire. It is my most favorite book I ever read. And it's her like teaching you how to pray through like certain difficult circumstances. And, and it's like teaching you like bold prayers. So it's kind of like that dangerous prayers idea, but it's like praying bold prayers and like specifically against like spiritual warfare and like Satan mm -hmm. and like the lies that he wants to fill our heads with and that are the things that he tries to keep us from and like specifically praying against those things. It's really, really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. I like the Bible. <laughs> I figured you were going to say wow. that. I know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a youth pastor I was, answer. I was waiting for him to say it. I was I'm sure Prashila wrote a very good book. I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> that that but, no, but honestly, and I, and I think some of the most encouraging places in scripture that yeah. I've seen prayer is the prayer of women. Like there's so many times mm. in scripture yeah, that I'm like dude. blown away by like Mary's prayer. Mm -hmm. wow. Or there's just like, I am like so challenged by those and the open and honest yeah. prayers of yeah. Of people in scripture but man, it, it's been those and, and they're yeah. even like written in song form so there's even like something way more beautiful than the way i pray for mm -hmm. safe traveling mercies but even <laughs> just like hey can, can i pray through the psalms like yeah. i don't know what to do so i like open up the book of psalms and yeah. it's cool to see like david and all of these different situations and all these different emotions be like so honest with god yeah. being like mm -hmm. oh i can be that honest with him yeah with my sin with my fear with any situation um and so yeah i think sometimes when i'm stuck it's it's great to just like look at the encouragement and the model that yeah. people in scripture have done yeah. and modern day people who follow jesus as well that sure. have like written yeah. these books too so it was yeah 100 percent. thanks be, just trying to be fun just trying to be fun <laughs> no, go for it yeah <laughs> We need to have the Bible in there, of course, bro, of course. Yeah. Um, I was going to say one for me that I've actually been reading through recently that's been helpful is a book uh, called, uh, wait, I'm going to make sure I get the title right because it's long, Praying Like Monks, Living Like Fools by John Mark Comer, mm -hmm. as a pastor out in, in Portland. Um, and, dude, that that book just talks so much about, like, just how um, sacred prayer is and just, like, the, the weight of it. And, like, obviously we have very free access to it, but sometimes it's like, oh, man, like, truly we don't understand, like, just how – like impactful that connection really is in so many ways. So that, that's been fun to read through and get to see uh, some of that then as well too. But yeah, all right, 
You all right? Switching to Easter? Easter. Let's yes. talk about Easter for a minute, all right? So we even just talked about, uh, or as, towards the beginning here, we talked about some of those Easter traditions that we loved, right? And some of the uh, things that we grew up doing in our families when it came to, to Easter around that season, too. Um, but obviously those things, um, like Easter egg hunts aren't in the Bible. As far as I know, right? <laughs> like I don't think there was anything of that necessarily. I couldn't going on. find it. You can't find it. All right. I, the I can't the passage really is Drew, scripture, like not it. the eggs. That was pretty good. Oh, you can find the eggs. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Time. That's Thank awesome. Um, but uh, but yeah. So obviously, Easter as a holiday in general, um, you know, kind of gets filled up with all these other things that don't actually really get a chance to hit at the true reason why we in our faith celebrate Easter than to how have y'all thought through that? How has that uh, meaning or significance of Easter changed for you across your lifetime? Um, and just, you've been finding that uh, ability to celebrate um, truly the, the gospel, the good news, like Jesus's death and resurrection as that's the true meaning behind Easter and stuff. I gotta be better at it. I'll be honest. If someone's like, what's your favorite holiday? I go to Christmas. Sure. I love uh, everything about Christmas. Like, we even celebrate the day before Christmas because we know Christmas is coming. Like, oh, Christmas Eve. Like, yeah, that's just like, right. that just shows so like, like how like how elevated <laughs> yeah. it is. Just another reason to eat more food, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fair, fair. But in scripture, we're never commanded to remember Jesus' birthday. There's not mm. a single time that yeah. we're commanded, but we are commanded to remember his death and resurrection. Yeah. Like, it's actually a command. Like, so you need to do this. Yeah. So e even when he was with his his best friends before he was going to be crucified and he was saying, like, hey, this is going to happen. I'm going to be crucified. But then three days later, I'm going to rise. And they still were like, I don't understand what's going on. He yeah. was like, do this in remembrance of what I'm about to do for you. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you need to. In your calendar, in your life, you need to set a time that you look back and remember what I've done for you. Yeah. Yeah. And we fill that with a lot of extra things. But even just like traditions or how we do that as a family, like I, I want my son to grow up and recognize Christmas exists because of Easter. Right. And without Easter, Christmas doesn't matter. Yeah. And so how do we elevate that in our thinking, in our enjoyment, in our celebration, all of that, and what am I doing to fulfill the command of remembering what Jesus did for us? And I, I don't know if I'm great at that. Yeah. Well, That's dude, I love that. And even just like, if I can use football language real yeah. quick, right? Like, I feel like so often the church talks about Christmas as if it was like, that's the Super Bowl, yeah. right? Like that's our big moment throughout the year of like celebrating all this, right? And sometimes it can feel like Easter kind of gets put to the wayside of that then yeah. too in some ways. So no, I yeah. totally agree, yeah. That's so good. I love just, that's so good. Like God commanded us to remember. But on the flip side of that, yeah. I feel like for me, for whatever reason growing up, I would like feel like I needed to be like extra spiritual, like extra close to God on Easter or, or Christmas. And yeah. I just like in my head was like, oh, I need to be like, just I need to be really strong in my faith come Easter like it's coming like I would uh, feel that and I don't know where that came from but and I don't know maybe I'm the only one who maybe nobody else struggles with that but if you do and you feel that like I just want to squash that sure. and say like it, what Jesus did is why that doesn't matter like yeah. it, because of what he did for us like you're it doesn't, it's not about you being good enough like your salvation can never be taken away from you yeah. and on like remember that day and don't ever think it Remember that day, thank God for what he's done, thank Jesus for what he's done, and don't ever think it. Yeah. How that, do you not want to celebrate hope? Yeah. Hmm. That's like that's what it is. It, yeah. It's yeah. it's the hope of the world. It's the hope I have, the hope for today and the hope for eternity. Yeah. And like, why why wouldn't I want to like mm -hmm. find the joy and the grace mm -hmm. that's been given to us because of that action? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead I'm like, oh, a baby was born, which is awesome and how it happened and all of that is great, but I don't I, I keep elevating that above yeah the hope and the grace we have because of what Jesus did. And just and, sit in that and soak it in yep. and the gratitude for that and just like be joyful. Like yeah. that, it's amazing what he did. Yep. Yeah. So like it's fun to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And even too, I think like, um, like uh, on one end of things too, right? Like we're seeing it from that perspective of like, Hey, like this is a celebration, right? Like Easter okay. truly is a chance for us to celebrate that. And then the other side too, someone else could be looking at Easter from not a faith perspective then too, and also equally be excited about it and celebrating it as well during the season too. How has there ever come a point in um, y'all's life where you've like, uh, gotten a chance to interact with someone like that who may not have the same background for, uh, for celebrating Easter that we do in our faith. And then like, how did that interaction go? Like how, or maybe even 
grander scale, how do you really share about that good news of Jesus's death and resurrection over Easter with someone who may not share our same faith then and how like and try to equate the two in some way or like or or or, or not equate the two. That's not the wrong way of saying it. But um yeah, you get to like see that holiday as something different then than just what the world makes to be with the jelly Shag. beans uh, jelly beans and which are delicious by the way. The jelly beans I ate a couple and they're yeah. They're good. No, not it. That's a hot take. That's a hot take right Sorry. there. It is. I'm not a jelly bean lover. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good question. Yeah. Culturally, it's known, at least. Even if they don't know the meaning behind it, this yeah. idea of like Easter is not like a surprise mm. uh, to people. And so the invite opportunity is huge. Yeah. So even if you're like, I don't know what to say, hey, come come sit with me on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. I mean, we'd love to have you. A part of our family yeah. for that day, and there's something there's something powerful about inviting someone in to like see and experience it, yeah. even if know how to share the gospel and whatever that looks like. But man, d- don't miss the power of the season, even culturally, that sure. that we get to use to yeah. leverage people to share about Jesus or invite them with you as you're yeah. sitting under it. Yeah, and I think ABCs are really good, like to know how. Like you, it's easy to remember ABCs. So like admit that you need Jesus to pay for the penalty for your sins, mm-hmm. believe that he did that by dying on the cross for us, and then choose to follow him, choose to believe that he did that for you, yeah. and yeah. follow after him. I think we can overcomplicate it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there, there's this great interaction with Paul and the Philippian jailer, and there's an earthquake. And there's, it, it's a great thing. Uh, you should read it out uh, in the book of Acts. And the Philippian jailer literally looks at Paul and says, what must I do to be saved? Mm-hmm. How cool would that be to have one of your friends ask you that question? Yeah. But then I think I would panic and be yeah. like, Oh my goodness, what do I say? <laughs> yeah. And Paul is just like, repent and believe. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's that yeah. that is the correct response to the gospel. Yeah. Because he 100%. saw the the Philippian jailer saw the power of God to save. Mm-hmm. And his question was, What must I do to be saved? Repent and believe. Yeah. yeah. Well, Good. y'all, that's gold. I hope from both of you guys. That's there's just so much gold in there. And I, I just think a great way to maybe just even close out this episode for us too is just to be thinking about, right? Like, um, we're about to go into the season, right? Um, even though it feels weirdly earlier than it normally is this year, like Easter is like right around the corner. Um, on. like it is a great time, like you said, not to just be sharing about um the good news into, but like we can even leverage the season just to invite um for to invite people to come check out church with us then too because there's that more openness and willingness to, to try that in this season um would you guys just be willing to close this out with like hey what have been some you know pro tips if you will for inviting to to easter or even just in general that have just been helpful for you and just um getting your friends your family members whoever it is that y'all have invited to um just come check out church with y'all over the over the holidays then mm-hmm. that's good i think planning for something fun after that because i feel like that can like you know, you need a little bit of bribery sometimes. Yeah. Like, hey, if you come to the gathering with me, let's go get coffee yeah. after. Let's go get yeah. dinner I'll go buy after. buy you lunch afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. yeah, yeah. Or like, um, yeah. hey, you can come to my house and we can paint eggs and then I'll hide them and then you can find them. That again. would totally make someone want to come. You'd be like, that's, oh my goodness, perfect. let's not, do that. Not me. <laughs> I want to come. <laughs> but also I think another one that's like, this is easy. Like yeah. sometimes I think a text can be better than in person sometimes. Really? And I know, I feel like that might sound like the cop out, yeah, but, no, no, but it gives them, yeah. so it's not an on the spot, like uncomfortable moment for them. If there's someone who's like, uh, it's very uncomfortable. Like they've never been to church maybe. Yeah. It gives them, it doesn't put them on the spot. It gives mm-hmm. them time to think about it. It gives them time to respond. You can follow up then in person. You can follow up again with another text, yeah. but sometimes like depending on the person, like that might be a less like, I don't know if invasive is the right word to use there, but just like, Make it more comfortable. Like, try yeah. to make it as comfortable as possible and, like, don't make it a big deal. Like, just, like, yeah, come to church with me. Yeah, that's great. Come sit with me. Yeah. Mm. I feel that even feels a little bit different than, like, hey, do, do you want to come to Easter? Mm. Hey, on Sunday, do you want to come, like, sit with me and my family? Mm. Yeah. Because, like, they just, like, may not know what to do or where to go. Yeah. But if someone's, like, sit with me, oh, you're going to be with me. We're yeah. going to walk in together. You're going to show me <laughs> where to go. I know, there's just yeah. something so much, like, that invite just feels different than, Sure. Hey, we have seven gatherings at church. You should like what? What is a gat? Like, yeah. I don't know. E- even like, just be careful of some of the words you you say. Yeah. Hey, this is something that's like really important and impactful to me, and I'd love for you to experience that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if they're a friend, they're probably gonna be like, oh, if it's that important. So I think you can even right. say, hey, this is something that is huge for me, and I'd love for you to like mm-hmm. see it. If someone else did that to me, I would probably say yes to them. Sure. Because I love that person. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's huge, good. Y'all. That's great. Well, guys, thanks so much for being on for these episodes. It's been awesome getting to hang out with y'all and uh, awesome to hang out with you guys as well. Thanks for listening and tuning in and we'll see you guys next time on the podcast. Thank you.